right, so let's talk about elasticity problem 3-4.1. And in this problem it says, uh, suppose we have two sets of axes and uh, they have the same origin. The cosine of the angle between any two sets of axes is de designated in table 3-4.1. Let me see if I can find that and put that on here. All right, there we go, that's the table. For example, the cosine of the angle between the capital Y2 and the capital X3 axis is A23. Show that the sum of the squares of the numbers in any row or column of this table is 1. Show that the sum of the products of the numbers in any row or column with the corresponding numbers in any other row or column is 0. And then it gives a hint, um, which we're going to need to talk about. It says, hint, C section 117. Actually, that was a bad hint. And it's been a bad hint in the second edition and in the third edition. It should really say C section 1 24. And section 124 deals with the transformation of tensors on a rotation of rectangular Cartesian coordinate system. And this is the figure that I got. So um, instead of using capital X1, X2, and X3, and capital Y1, Y2, Y3, this figure uses little xyz and capital XYZ. And we uh, talked about this previously in our lectures, like we have the old and the new coordinate system. And the way to get these coefficients is by projecting one of the axes onto another. And so these coefficients, and I probably used the symbol M in my lecture, these coefficients represent the projections, which can also be interpreted as the direction cosines. So for example, if I use the little xyz system as my original system, and this was the particular vector here, which would be like this one, then the cosine of the angle would be A11 with the little x system, and then this would be the A12, this would be the A13. So really what this is trying to get you to think about is that the interpretation of these coefficients as direction cosines for a unit orthonormal system is such that A11 squared plus A12 squared plus A13 squared is equal to 1 equal to 1. And that follows a relationship like cosine squared alpha plus cosine squared beta plus cosine squared gamma is equal to 1. Um, now the fact that these are orthogonal systems also means that if I were to take the dot product between this row and some other row then I get 0. So y1 dotted with y2 be equal to 0. So really that's kind of all that I would expect out of this problem, uh, but it's just trying to make you think about it. The real fireworks, I guess, uh, the real action happens when you have non-orthonormal systems and non-unit systems. There's a whole mess of things that you can get into when that's the case, but in our class we're going to avoid those kind of discussions. But you may have problems in general curvilinear coordinates where, where those things may occur, in which case you have lots of nice things to learn about, including Christoffel symbols and contravariant and covariant and mixed components of tensors and all that kind of good stuff. Well, let's take a look at um, this section 124. It looks like on the next page, 
and and basically you know th this is what it's saying so these things are equal to one and if we look at another one and their dot product then it would be equal to zero because they're mutually perpendicular so if you want to add more detail you can but but that is sufficient